What is going on everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome to episode 6 of the New Beginner Java Game Programming Tutorial Series. In this tutorial we're going to learn how to do a few more things with the graphics object of our game, so let's get to it. Now before we start here, let's delete this line of test code that we created in the last tutorial, the g.fillerect method. Delete that because we're going to learn how to do that on our very own. Now before we can get to drawing things onto the screen, we have to talk about the coordinate system of Java, or of our screen. So you've all seen coordinate systems in math class before. I'm assuming you all know how a coordinate system works and you've used them before. So we have an x-axis that increases as it goes from left to right, and we have a y-axis that increases as it goes up. So point 0, comma 0 would be right here, point 1, comma 1 would be right here, point uh, 2 comma 0 would be right here, etc, etc. You know how a coordinate system works, I'm assuming. Now, when we're programming or drawing stuff in Java, this isn't how it works, actually. It works much differently. The very first change that we're going to notice is that the units that we'll be working in, so the x and y units that we'll have, are in pixels. And I'm assuming you all know what pixels are. Pixels are all the little dots in your computer screen that make up the images and everything. Again, you can look those up if you don't know what they are. They're really simple to learn. So the x and y coordinates are going to be measured in pixels. So pixel 1, 1 would be here, pixel 2, 2 would be here, etc, etc. So that's the units that we're going to be using in Java, our pixels. But there's another huge change when we're working in graphics in Java. Instead of point 0, 0 being down here, or pixel 0, 0, it's actually up here at the upper left. This would be pixel 0, 0, the first pixel on your computer screen. Pixel 1, 1 would be right here. Pixel 2, 2 would be right here. Pixel 3, 0 would be right here. So the y-axis is flipped around. The x-axis still works the norm. So it increases going from left to right. But the y-axis increases going down instead of up. So coordinate 1 would be here, coordinate 2 would be here, coordinate 3 would be here, going down. This takes a while to grasp because you're so used to it going up like a normal coordinate system, but you're going to get the hang of it in no time. So remember that the coordinate system works a bit differently in Java. That's all I wanted you guys to know. So point zero zero is up here, and it goes down on the y-axis. So now we got all that math stuff out of the way, let's actually draw something to the screen. Before we can draw something to the screen, we have to clear the screen every single time we render. So before we draw anything, we're going to clear the screen. Whoa, I cannot type. How do we clear the screen? Well, we do something with our graphics object. We're going to g.clearRect. The clear rectangle stands for, well, clear rectangle. I just said it. And it will clear a certain portion of your screen. Now, we want to clear our whole entire screen. So the x and y coordinate is going to be 0, comma, 0, so the very upper left of our screen. And since we want to clear the whole screen, we have to give it the screen's width and the screen's height. That way, it'll clear everything in between. So plug in our width and height variables. That should clear the screen for us. So if we go ahead and run our game now, it looks exactly like it did before. Nothing's on it, but it is being cleared every time. Just we can't see it. So that's that. Now let's finally get to drawing something to the screen. Now the graphics object G holds many methods. We can draw squares, rectangles, circles, everything in different colors with the graphics object. We're going to learn how to draw images with it in the next tutorial, but for now we're going to stick with some basic shapes. So in order to draw a rectangle, we have to do g.drawRect. And the draw rectangle function takes an x and y coordinate, so starting x and y coordinate for the rectangle, and then a width and height of the rectangle. I'll make my x coordinate at 10, and my y coordinate will go down 50. Then we'll plug in, I'll oh, say, 50, 70 for the width and height of the rectangle. This should get us a rectangle displayed on the screen. So if we run this here, we get one. As you can see, the x-coordinate is 10, and the rectangle is about 10 pixels over. The y-coordinate is 50, and it's about 50 pixels down. Then the width is 50, so from here to here is 50 pixels. And I specified the height to be 70, so from here to here is 70 pixels. You should get the hang of this really quickly. So that just drew a rectangle on the screen. But what if we wanted to fill this rectangle in with a color? Well, we do that by, instead of g.drawRect, we do g.fillRect. This will fill in a rectangle. So now if we run it, it's completely solid color. But what if we want a different color? What if we want it to be red? Well, the graphics object offers a really simple way to set the color. 
we do g.set color, and then we pass in the color that we want. So we're going to do color.red, for instance, and make sure you import the color class. There we go. So what this is saying to Java, this line right here says, all right, every single thing that I draw after this line of code should be in the color red. That means this rectangle will be filled with the color red. So if we go ahead and run this here, our rectangle is now red. What if we wanted a second rectangle in the screen, though? We're going to do g.fill rect. Um, I'm going to make this one start at 0, 0.00, and it'll be a really tiny one. It'll be uh, 10 pixels by 10 pixels. So it's going to be really small. If we go ahead and run this, we get our big rectangle still, and then we get our second rectangle, which is up here. But I want this rectangle to be green, not red. So I just have to use the set color method again. So g dot set color color dot green. So we're going to set the color red, draw our first rectangle. Then we're going to reset the color to green, and then draw our second rectangle. So if we run this, our rectangle up here is now green, while this one is still red. This shows that the order in which you place your code matters quite a bit in Java. So if you set the color to red, everything after it will be red. Not anything before, not anything to the side of it. So when you set the color to red, everything after that will be red. If you reset the color, everything will be whatever color you reset it to. So for instance, green, this will be set to green. Now, I want you guys to experiment with this. What happens if you have a negative x-coordinate or a width that's over the screen size? What happens if two rectangles overlap? What happens then? It does the order in which you write the matter? Go experiment with, with, with this. Have fun. Make some, cool, make some cool square dog shapes. I don't know. Have fun with it. I'm going to see you guys in the next tutorial where we're going to get images displayed on the screen. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you then.